journey down the Nipigon River, past and the present. We're going to start way up here on Lake Nipigon and come down through all the, the, the falls. And uh, that's uh, Virgin Falls. That's a controlled dam built in 1925. You will not have this map at home like I have unless you get one of these. But I'm going to give you a tour down. And again, there's Upper Virgin Falls right here with all the control dams. And you're coming down the river here. And the best fishing, this is, uh, I don't know how old these pictures are, but see all the falls? And now I'm going to show you the fishing rod right here. It's flat. That falls, no longer there. They're all flat like this fishing rod. The whole lake area here is flat from that dam. It backed up. 11 miles is the best speck of trout fishing in the world. When they put that dam in, they dammed up all these falls. And uh, the light part is original. White shoots, all these names here. That was original way back. And uh, now it's flat. You see the dark blue? It's just one big flat lake. So while you're slowly going down here, I'm going to fire up this one now. They're both on the internet, but you will not get my stories. And you don't have to show either one of these. Come on, go. So this is coming down the river. Now this is nipping on trail. This is a video. Now I'm going to tell you stuff they don't tell you when you watch this. You can read this when you watch it at home online. And again, it's flat on this side. I'm using my fish rod back and forth. So, uh, the flat lake up way above. And, uh, now, here you come up here. You come up by railway, Canadian National, up to a place called Orient Bay. It's still there. It's shut down. That's a Orient Bay, the Royal Windsor Lodge. And that's a part of our heritage. Now, this is where everything takes off from at Orient Bay. And they come across Lake Nipigon over to the Virgin Falls. Now, this is what it looked like. I can almost maybe remember that when I was a kid, maybe, but that's what it doesn't look like that now. It's one big park. It's empty. It's falling down. It's going to be torn down. But this is some of the families. And they were hardworking fellows or natives. They worked. Guides. And some of them, uh, I heard, packed 300, 400 packs. I don't know if that was trappers or what. But they, uh, they carried canoes, and I'm going back and forth, and I can almost remember that building. So here we go across the motor launch from... Uh, Orient Bay across the top end of Lake Nipigon here. See, there's the motor launch. Now, the, the, the clients were in there, and the guides, the native guides, indigenous people, did not get to ride. They had to ride the canoes over. Again, Lake Nipigon, I never saw it so level like that. I used to see it pretty rip-roaring. And probably the number of Highway 11s along those cliffs, probably. And they're riding no life jackets and canoes, open canoe across Lake Nipigon. So anybody has been on Lake Nipigon, you know it's not always that, that kind. And so we're still heading down here, down Hamilton Pool, and I like this fellow with the legs stick out. Looks like a motorcycle guy with the legs out there heading out across Lake Nipigon. So now we're coming to Hamilton Pool. We're way down the bottom already. We're heading down into here. Pine Portage Dam is over here. Now we're getting down to Robinson's Pool. That's down in here. We're getting down into here. And that's what it looks like today. And the falls, both sides, you'll see the, on the, the falls here. And there's a pine portage dam right across that pool. That's, we're on top of the dam now. So, and always remember all the rushing water here. And, and there's again, the dam is there. Now what I always say, the fish on the Nipigon River were athletes. That's why they had such big fish in those days, right there. And they were athletes and they had the best. So. That's why they're with the, all the falls, 11 miles of falls gone when they built the Pine Portage Dam. And I've been here, now we're into my territory. We used to camp here one time, now Hydro blocked it all off. And that's what it was before. People fished along there. And there's a little shot of the dam. Again, we used to camp here. That's the dam. They put the block back, lift make dipping on a bit. And now we're on, my hair standing up in the back of my neck, split rock. And here we're coming down in a canoe. Not Kevlar, they were probably canvas back canoes packed coming down the Nipigon River. And here was Spit Rock. Awesome place. And the cliffs are 1,500 feet on that side. And on the hiking side, we have a trail into there, Spit Rock. It's only 1,300 feet. Again, I said 1,500 feet on here. So, and that's gone through. 
I can tell the story, and that's, I call that battleship rock. Tugboat rock. And, I was, and there's Spit Rock again, right in the middle. And here they are shooting down the... I give a kudos to the cameraman. Imagine carrying a camera and, and getting someplace and then taking video of this. Again, Spit Rock here. So we're down, we're down on this map now. We've come down to Spit Rock. Coming down. And our trail is right about here someplace. It's a hiking trail. You can actually hike into Spit Rock. And there's a trail to go in there. And actually see it. And it's an awesome place. There's no place east of the Rockies like Spit Rock Passage. No, I've heard from a guy who said no way. And here they're rowing the canoes down. And one guy just told me today the big, uh, um, I can't remember what he called them. Uh, and, but they had to roll them up, get them back up. They used to run down a log drive and they had to haul them back up. Now this camp here is right across in Spit Rock. Right across, right here. It's right here. Marked in the wrong place. Plug with rock again. So. Now we're heading the Narrows. When they put the dam in, they flooded the Narrows. They flooded that. There's only a small area. See, when they put Cameron in, they only blocked this off. Now I gotta watch this right here. Cameron Falls, right here. The fish could not get past in the early days past Cameron. No Lake Superior fish ever got to Lake Nipigon because they could not pass Cameron Falls. The rest they get up, but not Cameron. So, uh, so that's why maybe they got up the Underground River. That's the way they got up. And come here to the bridge in front of Cameron. And you, that's the only bridge you can cross, beside Nipigon River Bridge, you can cross the Nipigon River on the Bailey Bridge. That was used for the trains to, that built Cameron and Pine and uh, Alexander. And again, when the falls are there at Alexander. So. And again, nothing, they're shooting down the river here, or some of the, the falls, just coming. We're still above Spit Rock here on this one. We're coming down Alexander Portage now, coming down to this area here. Again, it's, it's not always the falls there, and they had to put these red tanks there to keep the boaters from going in too close, because they would be submerged the water. This is Lake Helen, that's Highway 11. This is the old landing, Nipigon Landing. We used to call it landing when we were kids. So we're at just above the Nipigon River Bridge right now. That's just about, that's what it looks like today. So we're into my modern area, and here again, 1905, I think I pictured this, and no, no uh, causeway. Now they put the causeway, and it's all grown in. Again, no causeway, 1906, and the river went right around, and the shot, and I got to tell the story about that after. Uh, again, this is the last picture, right here, see, it will be all eroded right behind us, the lagoon. It'll be, the museum might not have been here. And that's the end of that story. Now it's all going in. Now we're going to go here. The gorge. That talking about spit rock. And the canoe coming down. Remember I said no life jackets? Anybody did some canoeing knows something about that. This is coming to the meat part. I gotta tell the story about this here too. Well, I got a minute. Anyway, the lagoon here, it's not all just deep. I got a map from the Mayor, like this, and it goes right around. There's deep parts and the shallow parts. It's like an old river going right around. That's why it was so good. Now here we go here now. I wouldn't do this. I let this mark the last. Going across these walkways. And this is 1923. No rescue. No, no Coast Guard will come and get you there. And the rocks are probably pretty slippery. But look at imagine the ozone and the dampness. But that's where the fish was, right there in the pools. That's where they caught them. Lutz. Royalty come here. I just heard the story this morning. The Duke of Connaught was here in 1918, and he sent his cousin, Prince Edward, to come back the next year, 1919. So uh, I leave this part stick out to last. That's why I do the 10 minutes here. And they're coming down. The, and again, this cameraman is way up on top of the cliff somewhere there. I imagine how to climb in 923. I don't think they had a little small handicap in those days. I don't know what they carry. So we're heading down into Split Rock. Again, my hair is standing up. It's an awesome place. This picture shouldn't be here. I don't know. It's, that's again on Lake Nipigon, but they put it here. So we're going to go to Split Rock. By that time, it was slowly coming up because Cameron Falls was in. When they made this video, Cameron Falls lifted up already. And, uh, but you can still see the damage by the river when it flooded, no pine. The main river here coming down, flooded. Oh, maybe they got something else here. Yes, our indigenous people are hard working. 
Look at just the gold. And he likes to kick up a little steam. Watch the water fly up that up, I. Just out of luck to paddle. They were hard working people. I even found farmland out there in uh, Parm Machine where they used to live. Hunters. And then the gorge. Spit Rock. Again, this is 923. Spit Rock's mentioned many times earlier than that. And uh, again, the gorge. Uh, look at the, the damage here left by the water flooding. A hiking trail right up about here, if you remember, I was showing you the picture. Maybe that's me sitting there now on top of that rock. But anyway, that's a look. But look at how much the water, the damage, the water raging the Nipigon River and flood in those days when, when the great flood, everything flooded, no dams, and they come down and flooded. So this is Spit Rock itself from the south end. And then there's a guy, he likes to kick up a little uh, water again. So. There we go. And that's the end of it. Thank you very much. That's good. Now I got a story and I can't remember two of them. I did try to brief you the lagoon. That's very important that it's like this all the way around. It's not flat. I always thought it was just 20. It's not. It's 20 and 7 goes around. Now I got to tell a story. This is by Don Gapin. It's off his. I got. It's in here in Nipigon. We have the Don Gapin. He visited us here at the chalet. And I recorded him on camera, and you come watch it. But one of the stories I want to share, actually two, when they go fishing, and they used to come down the Nipping River with the guides, they used to slip the river. They used to slip. They paddle like this, slip backwards down the river. Okay, they're slipping. They're not paddling up or paddling down. They're slipping down the river. Okay, that's one story. Second story, you will not find this anywhere else. Just a Nipping on here. The story. Uh, young Don went to see his dad. Yeah, and he says, uh, hey, Dad, he says, he says I, I'm the boss's son. He said, that Indian is sitting there smoking his pipe, telling stories at night. I got to make the beds, put firewood, and get the stuff ready, get food, make supper, get the wash. I got to do all the work. That's his job. I'm the boss's son, he said. And uh, his father looked up. He said, son, he's doing his job. You do his job. Okay, he was doing the heritage, telling the stories. Didn't have TV in those days. He told a story to pipe and fishing. So, is that a good story? Do you like my stories? There's nobody else to get into it. Okay, we're going to come around the corner. Two more minutes, D. This was caught. Oh, I'm going to put my fishing rod back in. You'll get set up there whenever you want. And uh, they caught this one on uh, July 1st or something. The very next day, they caught a double catch. Because... They didn't know this. Rob Swinks had found this out. They, found, they got the world record double catch again. Because they put more in one line. He didn't have just one. Maybe he had four lines on. So they got the world record double catch on the Nipigon River again. And this is all reached by the Canadian National Wavy System. The Kinghorn Line, which has now been pulled away. We don't have it anymore. I'll let you go over here. This is Mr. Alexi, Andrew. And his grandson, still alive now. Lulu, I guess they call him. Little baby at the Nipigon Hospital. And uh, he was the guy, he was also the guy for the Duke of Connaught and for Edward, Prince of Wales. Became Edward VIII, I guess. And I think he was the one that abdicated. Now, I like to talk about money. And this night, you went all non residents paying $15 and license and $400. That's what they paid in those days. The equivalent of 2015, equivalent of $400. Now, what I like. Is here that First Nation people, two guys are hired for each tourist. 1881, you watch the old westerns, the old cavalry show. Uh, I think the private made 25 or 30 dollars a month as a cavalryman, and uh, guys working on a farm, they might have got uh, 25 or 30 dollars and found. But these people were getting two dollars a day at that time, which if they worked 20 days was 40 dollars a month, no income tax. Plus, whatever else they did, canoes. They were hard-working people. So again, uh, I guess they're working hard, but I like that about the, the money they made in those days. So one day the young lady said to me, Jim, you forgot your bag. Oh, I said, bring it over to me. She grabbed it and went, ur, ur, no. But anyways, I get people to pick this up. Look at that. That's 14.5 pounds, that bag. That's the way the fish. Then I bring them over here. Come with me. And I come over to the fishing rod. Yes, this slender little fishing rod here. And that's what they caught it on. Hard to believe. That's what they caught on right there by 
Dr. Cook. And it, we're, it's a uh, Lynn from Dr. Donaldson are letting us uh, keep it here and uh, have all the books to register the names when they come in to do that. So this is uh, the fishing rod it was caught on. So, and I, probably a fly fishing rod at that time, I think so. So, um, and that's the remains, nothing left of it too much, the original fish. It did just have the skin, but we figure someone says they'll make the other half somewhere. That's one side of the skin, where's the other side? So, and that's all I'm gonna say, I think.